Drawing a lion is easier than you think and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. So this video is part two out of two of some sort of a mini series in which I go a little bit more in depth on some subjects such as sketching your character, coloring your character, as well as shading your character. So part one, if you want to check it out, we've created this sketch and I was kind of talking about the basics of sketching. And part two, which is this video, is going to be more about coloring and shading. And here we're going to do more of a painterly style. So we're just going to start by color blocking the main areas and then I'm going to teach you about the basics of shading. And I'm personally going to be working in Procreate, which is an app on the iPad, but you can follow along this technique using most digital art software. The technique is the same. As long as you have layers, you'll be able to follow along. And you can use this technique with pretty much anything. It doesn't even have to be a character. It could be an object or like, I, I don't know, a scenery, whatever. It is going to work. If you do have the sketch from part one though, go ahead and pull it out and we're gonna just go from there. So we've created two sketches in the first part, a clean sketch and a rough sketch. I personally like to have both on one layer and kind of use that because I feel like it has a bit more of a 3D feel. So you can just merge the two layers together and it's gonna look something like that. And I personally also like to really lower the opacity of my sketch until I can just barely see it before adding the colors. And once that is done, just go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to color or lion or something like that. And make sure you drag it below the sketch layer. Now, creating a color palette is really not the easiest thing in the world, at least it's not for me, but there are a few tricks that you can use in Procreate to make the whole thing a little bit less of, um, you know, a challenge. <laughs> and one of those is the Harmony tool that comes with Procreate. So for example here, since I already have my blue background, I'm gonna go and color pick that and going in the Harmony panel, you can go ahead and experiment with the different like color suggestions, I guess. And all the suggestions that are gonna be on that wheel are going to work well with the color that we've selected, in this case, the background. And you can go and experiment and try to find a color for your lion that you like using the Harmony panel. I'm personally just going to color pick a very light orange that I like. And later we're gonna go back and tweak the colors anyway. So for now, don't agonize, just pick something that roughly works and we're gonna go from there. Now, in terms of brushes, in this video, I'm pretty much just going to be using one brush because like I was saying, uh, this is gonna be more of a painterly feel. And I wanna show you that you don't necessarily need a whole lot of brushes if you want to create illustrations. So you can use the 6B pencil that comes in the sketching panel. It's a free brush that comes with Procreate. I'm personally going to be using my everything brush that comes from my illustration bundle. It really is super versatile and it works really well for what I want to do, but it is definitely not essential. You can for sure follow along with the 6B pencil or anything else that you like, honestly. Just pick a brush that you know you're comfortable with. But if you do want to check out the illustration bundle, it will be linked in the description below as usual with a special promo code for the YouTube people. And here at this stage, all we want to do is map out the main section or areas of color with solid color. So you can see here, my brush has a little bit of texture to it. So does the 6B pencil, uh, but you don't want something that has too much texture. This is not the point here. I do want to have a little bit of grit, but I want to be able to draw the outline and then fill them in without the color going everywhere. So that's exactly what you are going to do as well. You're just going to outline all the sections of the lion that are going to be with that color. So kind of the fur color and then you're gonna fill those sections in using either color drop or if you're working in a different software, you're going to use the paint bucket tool. Now, if you're using a different software and you're not exactly sure which brush to use, try to find a brush that is either like a charcoal brush or a pencil brush. These are usually fairly you know, common in digital art software. So just find one like that and that's gonna be good. And depending on the brush you use, you might struggle a little bit with the color filling tool in Procreate, but you can adjust the threshold by just holding your pencil on the screen and then moving it from left to right or right to left, it doesn't matter, <laughs> until you get the right area colored in with the color. 
So you're going to do this for all the main colors on your character in my case and probably your case as well on the lion and I personally like to do it on separate layers first so that I can adjust the colors later with the trick that I'm going to show you soon. So I'm going to do the main on a separate layer. I'm not going to rename it because I'm just going to merge them later anyway. So for now I'm just going to pick a brown really quickly and later we're going to adjust it. So same thing as for the rest of the body, you're just going to outline the shape and then fill it in using color drop. And it is time for everyone's favorite, the secret password. So if you've watched this find the video, please go ahead and comment shading. We've been doing this for a few weeks now and seriously, it is just so fun. <laughs> it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me to create better tutorials for you guys. But it's also really, really cool to see the wonderful creative community that we're building here on this channel, especially because you guys know me, but I don't know you. So whenever you leave a comment, I get to see sometimes your name, sometimes your face. And yeah, it's just such a cool thing to see all of you guys. So go ahead and comment the word shading and we'll keep going. So once you're done color blocking your mane, we can actually go and tweak the color like I was telling you by just selecting the layer and going in the adjustment panel here at the top, which is this little magic wand icon, and selecting hue, saturation, and brightness for the entire layer. You're going to have three different options here at the bottom that are going to allow you to tweak your color and kind of experiment uh, in terms of your color palette as opposed to needing to have it you know, set from the get-go. You can just kind of try stuff and see what you like. And I really like this trick because it also allows you to find things that you would not necessarily have expected would work well with your illustration. So you can really go crazy and find really cool color combos. And once you're happy with the color, you can just merge the two layers that we've created together and just keep going with the color blocking. So in my case here, I'm gonna add the cape and most of the cape is kind of going to be below or behind the lion, I should say. So I'm just creating a new layer, not renaming it either, and putting that new layer behind or below, <laughs> sorry, below the lion. And again, same thing, just color blocking the cape. This time I'm going with a super bright red. And yeah, I'm personally going to keep this red, I think, but you could go back and use the hue saturation brightness tool again to tweak it and get something that you like. And then you can add kind of a white fur detailing, I guess, <laughs> to the cape, so the top and the sides. And it's just going to help making it a little bit more interesting and just make it pop from the background a bit more. Now, once you're done with that, you could go ahead and merge the color layer and the cape layer together. But since they're completely different elements, for now, I'm going to keep them separate and that's going to help with the shading later. But again, you could totally merge them, that would be fine as well. Now, I realize here I forgot the tail, so I'm just going to go back on my lion color layer and add the tail real quick. So take your time to color block the main color section of your character. Don't get in details though, really just map out the general areas. So feel free to pause the video here and we're going to meet in the next step in which we're going to add a lot more color variation to our color blocks to make them look so, so, so much better than they do right now. So in order to be drawing only in the color blocks that we've created, we're going to activate alpha lock. And you can do that by swapping your layer towards the right with two fingers, or you can just tap on the layer and activate it manually in the menu right here. And what it does, basically, like I was saying, everything we draw on this color layer now is going to stay within the shape that we already have drawn on it. So with that, we can go ahead and pick a different version of our fur color. I'm going with kind of a cream and adding more details. And as you can see here, if I'm going crazy, it does stay within the lion shape. That being said, I'm just going to focus on adding this cream color on the lower half of the face around the nose and the mouth, as well as on the belly. And you can see here I'm being really, 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 really loose. I'm not worrying about it going over the arm or something like that. I just kind of roughly want to map out a little bit more extra color and color variation and texture to make my character more interesting. And you could skip the step altogether if you want, but it definitely does make a big difference in the character in the end. It's just so much more happening. So highly recommend you do it and it's fairly quick. And I'm also going to do it on the mane, making the front part of the mane a little bit more saturated, so more like a 
orange <laughs> feel. And here, be careful though, we're not drawing any light or shadow, we're just adding color variation. Because, you know, if, if you think of fur, for example, because this is what we're drawing here, fur is not just one solid color. Fur is not made of like uniform plastic. <laughs> fur is a bunch of different color that changes from one area to the other. So this is what we're working on in this step. We're adding the color variation, we're not adding any shading just yet. So again, feel free to pause the video here to take all the time you need to add as much color variation as you want. Make sure that everything has been colored in. For example, here I forgot to draw the little uh, walking stick. So just get everything in order and then we're going to move on to adding the shading and I'm going to teach you kind of the basics of how that works. And don't forget, if you need to add an element on the layer that has alpha lock activated, you need to deactivate alpha lock, otherwise you're not going to be able to add anything else. So the first thing we need to do whenever we want to add some shading to a character is to figure out where the main light source is going to be. And it is optional, but you can go ahead and create a new layer or just draw really lightly on your piece of paper and kind of map out that main light source. So you can draw like a light bulb or a sun or something like that and just position it so you have always a reference of where the light is coming from. So in my case, I'm just going to draw a sun here on the top right of my piece of, well, not my piece of paper, top right of my canvas. You can also add some little lines that kind of show where the light is shining and where it's going to hit your character. So here I'm also pretending that the light is coming from slightly behind a character so that it's not perfectly in line, it is actually, you know, behind a character. And your shadows are going to be on the opposite side of your light. So in my case, the entire left side of my character is going to be shaded. And a very easy way to add shadows when you're working in the digital art software is to create a layer above your color layer. I like to rename it shadow just, you know, so I know what it is. And then you can change the blending mode of this layer. I like to use linear burn, some people use multiply as well. I just think linear burn is a little bit more colorful. And you might want to set the opacity around 50% to get started, but you can always come back and tweak that later. Now in terms of color, you might be tempted to draw your shadow in grey or even in black, but try to avoid that because it gives out really muddy looking shadows. Try to give a little bit more color, so you could go with a greyish brown, a greyish blue, greyish purple. I tend to go with a greyish purple, but you can also go and try to look at what the environment your character is in, like the main color of the environment. For example, if my lion was in the jungle, I might want to go with a greyish green but here since the background is blue and since i like to go with you know purplish shadows in general when my character is in the middle of nowhere i'm gonna go with a grayish purple we're also going to activate the clipping mask on the shadow layer so just tapping on it and then selecting clipping mask and now everything we draw on the shadow layer is going to stay within the shape of the color layer so it is a little bit like alpha lock but you know on a separate layer that is going to be really really helpful to draw shadows super quickly and that's the reason i decided to draw the cape on a separate layer was so that i could add the shadow with clipping mask easier as well now in terms of shading i'm gonna go and stick with the same brush like i was telling you all this tutorial I'm going to go with this one brush and I'm going to start on the opposite side of the light of course just shading what is definitely not getting any light and here you can go ahead and just do some general color blocking because we're going to refine it later now you just want to again map out the general shaded area so I'm going to speed up the video here, stop talking, let you focus on doing it, feel free to pause the video or just keep it going so you have an example of what I personally do. But seriously, all you need to do is look at your little sun or your little light bulb that you've drawn on, you know, one part of your canvas and imagine where the light is going and where it's not, you know, hitting your character and then drawing shadows there. So just do that and then we're going to meet at the next step in which we're going to refine everything and blend everything.
And don't forget to also add shadows on any other elements that you might have on the separate layers like the cape, the walking stick, and the crown. So just creating a new layer, applying it as a clipping mask, and then changing the blending mode to linear burn, multiplier, or any blending mode that you might like actually. That is, you know, you can experiment with that. Feel free to just play around and see what you like. Great, so once you've mapped out all of your shadows, we're going to go in and refine them by blending them. So you can either use a super soft brush like the soft brush from the airbrushing panel. I personally want to have a little bit more texture, so I'm going to go and use the um, stucco brush from the painting panel in Procreate. So this match tool, what it's going to do is going to allow you to kind of move your color around a little bit, which is going to effectively blend the shadows a little bit more and help you create nice transition. <laughs> this brush was way too big, I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. So you can see here, if you just go over the hard edges of your shadow, you're gonna be able to create some sort of a gradient. Now, with shadows, it is important to have some parts that are really sharp. For example, here, the ear is really close to the main which means the shadow is going to be really really sharp and the edge is going to be really clear and defined you do want to find balance between hard edges and soft edges in your shadows and i think one really helpful trick to find what shadow needs to be a hard edge and what shadow needs to have a soft edge is really to think is the thing that is creating the shadow close to the object on which the shadow is so for example, if we think about the ear and the mane, the ear is really, really close to the mane, so the edge is super sharp and clear. But if we look at just the general shading on the rest of the mane and the rest of the lion, that just comes from the fact that there is no sun hitting that space. Uh, there is not a clear object that is close to our lion casting a shadow, it's just a regular ambient kind of shadow. So these shadows, the edges tend to be way softer. So while you're blending, you might notice that some areas should not have shadows, like here the shadow from the face kind of bled on the main, so you just, you know, use your eraser and erase that, obviously. And then just go back to blending and refining your shadows. So at this stage here, again, try to keep a good balance between hard edges shadows and soft shadows. This is going to make such a big difference in the final result if you do have both type of shadows instead of just something that is super, 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 super blended and just weirdly too smooth. So take all the time you need here to experiment with the blending of your shadows. Feel free to pause the video and then we're going to meet in the next step in which we're going to refine everything so that it doesn't look quite as messy as it does right now. And like I was mentioning, you might want to play with the opacity of your shadow layer. You can just experiment and see what you like the most. Here there's really no rule, it is really just a personal preference, so play with that. And once you're happy with the shadows, we're going to add some highlights. Now for the highlights, you are probably going to want to create a new layer above the shadow layer, renaming it to highlights. And we're also going to apply it as a clipping mask so that the highlights stay within the lion color shape. So like this. And we're going to change the blending mode this time to add. Now add is a really, really powerful effect. It makes your color look like light. So that is what we want. But we want to lower the opacity pretty low. So around 20%. It doesn't need to be precise, but you know. Um, otherwise it's going to look overwhelming. And in terms of color, I like to go with a super bright yellowish orange because I'm pretending that my character is in the sun. So something like that. And here, kind of like the shadows, you're just going to look at your little sun reference or light bulb reference and you're going to see where the light is hitting the character. In my case, since it's slightly behind the character, it's pretty much just going to be the edges on the right that are going to be really, really highly highlighted. And you might have noticed in just the first few seconds of drawing, I already went ahead and changed the opacity of my highlight layer. I think I put it around 30%. But whenever you're working, feel free to go and change both the opacity and the blending modes until you find something that you really like the feel of. Here I'm just giving you suggestions. In general, add is a good mood, or good mood, <laughs> a good mode for light, but you might want to experiment with something else like overlay or soft light or something like that. Again, here it's all about finding something that works well with your base color and the light color that you're using. 
And on this highlight layer, you might also want to go in and start adding some textural details. So you can see here on the main, I'm adding some random little strands of light uh, that don't necessarily make sense in terms of highlights. Like it is not necessarily accurate with the, like, the physics of, of light, but it does add so much to texture and character building elements that you know you can experiment with that and as long as it is you know fairly believable and looks right it doesn't need to be totally accurate in the scientific sense <laughs> of of, uh, of it and you might want to hide your sketch layer for a little bit and just check that everything is you know working well and reactivate it and we're going to move on to adding some extra detail and shading manually for that, I like to hide the sun, we don't need it anymore, and then merge the highlights, shadow, and color layer. It is not essential, you can keep them separate, but I think it just makes stuff a little bit easier. So just squishing them with two fingers in Procreate, and then deactivating Alpha Lock so that we can draw a little bit <laughs> wherever we want. You can also deactivate manually if it didn't work for some reason. And I'm also going to merge the shadow layer on the cape layer. And here it's a question of preference you might want to hide the sketch layer or keep it on that's like again a question of preference and here what we want to do is manually add more contrast and just define some zones a little bit more so selecting your main tiger tiger wow <laughs> your main lion color layer you're going to color pick some sections that are a little bit bland so here i color picked the shadow area and i just made it a little bit darker a little bit more saturated and then manually going in and painting in more details and again just pushing in the contrast in some areas so here we want more of a painterly look at least i want more of painterly look so i'm not going to go in and add uh, outlines everywhere but i'm going to add i guess partial outlines <laughs> in the areas where some parts of the body overlap another so the arm overlaps the body, that's a good example, but you also have, for example, here little toes on the feet that were not defined before. So that's a really good way of defining little elements that were just getting lost otherwise. And it's also a good way of maybe cleaning up some of the edges a little bit and sharpening everything. And I really like to do that manually when I'm working on, for example, full-on children's book illustration, as opposed to having everything on separate layers, because it just feels a little bit more fluid and you get to just go in and kind of treat your illustration as a painting as opposed to something digital and I personally think you know it, it might require a little bit more practice before it actually feels like that but I really think that doing everything on one layer although it is a little bit more complicated um, you do get more flexibility and the illustration that you're going to create that way in the end is going to be a little bit more lively and it's going to look a little bit more like a I don't want to say it's going to look less digital because you know digital looking illustration is not necessarily a bad thing it is just going to look I guess a little bit more I don't want to say artistic either I don't know what the right word is it's going to look a little bit more organic there we go we're going to call it that way and you can really go and color pick as many colors as you want and change them as much as you want and you can also go in and add some details that you know were not there before for example here on this little fur area I'm gonna go in and add some little gray dots just to make it more detailed and more interesting and just yeah make the character feel like there's more happening in there you don't want to overdo it but it is a good thing to have some areas where there's barely anything happening for example the cape you know it's fairly flat not super texture and then have some areas that are way more detailed it's going to make the piece feel just more interesting because there's going to be some variety between again some zones that are fairly flat and uniform and some zones that have much more interest and details in them so creating the tension between the two again is a really cool tip in how to make an illustration feel more complete in general and at this stage, honestly, you can merge most of your layers, well, all of your layers together, except the sketch layer, of course, so that you can really go in and change any detail you want without worrying about shifting layers. Because since we're going with more of a painterly vibe, at this stage, all we want is to treat this, well, like a painting, like I was telling you. And we just want to go ahead, color pick a color, refine the details, add more details, change the shape a little bit, just kind of 
refine everything by color picking, going in, tweaking something, color picking again, going in and just building on the base that we've already created to make it look a little bit more interesting and more detailed and more vibrant and just more alive. One thing that I do like creating on separate layer though is all the facial features. So, well, I'm gonna rename this, this layer to lion because it's not the cape anymore. But yeah, I like to create a separate layer for the facial features and picking a really, really dark brownish color, not quite black. I'd, I just don't like using pure black in my illustrations because then you can add more shadows, you know, you kind of limited that there. But I like creating the facial features on a separate layer because I like going in and being able to move them around later without you know worrying about the fact that they're actually stuck with the base color so any element that is a like a very important detail in the artwork you might want to consider creating them on this separate layer first just to make sure that they are going to be exactly where you want them to be in the end and once you're happy with them you can just go ahead and merge the layers if you want but it is kind of a safety to draw them on separate layers especially when you know again the facial feature just a slight angle of an eyebrow can change the entire emotion so you might want to be able to easily tweak that uh, without having to redraw every other color on your piece. So for example here, when I'm zooming out, I'm noticing that I'm not super happy with the eyes. So <laughs> um, I'm just going to select, again, my facial feature layer. And then with my selection tool, setting it to freehand, I'm easily going to be able to just draw around the eye and use the arrow tool to move it and put it somewhere else. So having that on a separate layer is really, really super helpful. I'm actually going to move the other eye as well, might as well. So it takes just a few seconds and we don't have to erase or redraw everything super easy. And if you want to double check yourself, you can select all of your layers and with the arrow tool, you can click the flip horizontal option. That is going to give you kind of a fresher look on your piece. So that's super helpful before merging all of your layers to just double check that you're happy with everything. And since we worked on the shading, it is also a good idea to add a shadow below your character just so that it looks like it actually is standing on something and not just floating in the air. So on a new layer that you put below your character and you set the blending mode of this layer to the same blending mode you use for the shadows on your character, so either uh, linear burn or multiply, you can go back to again the same or, or at least similar color that you use for your character shadows and then just sketching a shadow on the ground around your character. Now you can also use the arrow tool, set it to distort and just kind of reposition the shadow and also kind of resize it and rotate it even if you want so that it looks exactly like you want it to be. But it doesn't need to be super precise. I like to have it super rough, but uh, just basically giving this idea of ground <laughs> and not just a floating character. And without drawing a full on background, you might want to add little elements to kind of show what the environment is. So in my case, I'm creating a new layer, renaming it tree. And then I'm gonna set the blending mode to soft light, I think. Yeah, but you can certainly just go ahead and experiment and find one that you like. And with the same color that I used for my shadow, I'm just going in and sketching, oh, that's way too small. <laughs> I'm just sketching, not even the silhouette, but just the outline of some trees. So you could play around with whatever other environment you want. You can draw like a little house, you could draw a throne since it's a king lion. You can really draw, again, whatever you want. It doesn't have to be outlines either. You could go in with full on silhouettes, but it's a nice little final touch to add to your piece to just making it feel like your character is in some sort of environment without having to go and draw a full on background. And if you enjoyed these steps for coloring and shading your character and want to practice on more cute animals, I highly recommend you check out this playlist in which I'm going to teach you exactly that, how to draw more cute animals. But before that, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel I post every single week and then you can click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.